Welcome. Hope you find this clip useful. Please subscribe and share to keep the channel going so we can make more helpful video clips. How to set up an assignment quiz. If we go under classwork, so I'm going to click on classwork. Okay, so that's where we are going to create our assignment quiz. Now the idea behind an assignment quiz is to have short questions that the computer can mark or the system can mark for you. So it makes the marking a lot easier, but it does take some time to set up. You click on create and then you click on quiz assignment. As soon as you've done that, it, it then takes you to the front page of your quiz assignment. You're going to give your assignment a, a title. So I'm just going to say example test. You don't have to add any instructions, but what is going to be important here is that you're going to have to set up a blank Google form. So there's already a, a link that is going to a blank Google form that I'm going to click on here. And when you go into that, that's where the magic is going to have to happen. Right from the start to make it easier to access afterwards, please give it a name at the top of the screen. I'm again just going to say example test. Take my caps lock off. Example and I'm giving it just a heading as well, the same heading as I did with my, as the name I gave it up top. Then, one of the important things that I do is that I always go to the gear. Now the gear is on in the top right hand corner. That's your settings. And I always make sure that I click on collect email addresses. It's always nice afterwards to, to be able to follow up or to email um, somebody back that has done the test. So I always put that as an automatic and I click on save. And you'll see the very first question that asks everybody then is to collect an email address. Now, one of the scenarios we have with our learners is that they tend to use AKAs when they register on their Gmail account. So to be able to make sure that I award the right mark for the right learner, my first two questions are always the surname of the learner and the name of the learner. So how do we do that? We click on the plus sign and I'm just going to type surname. And normally this is quite intuitive. It changes automatically the multiple choice question to a short answer. But if it doesn't, you just have to go and change the type of question to a short answer question. I'm not awarding any marks for this because it's their surname. I just want to know who they are. Then next question. I then ask for their name. And I make sure that it's a short answer. Now I can start with my questions. So I click on a plus. So first type of question that you can ask is for example, um, is a multiple choice question. So I can ask, oh, let's do this. Is it cold today? And I can add various options. I can say yes. I can say no. And as you can see here, uh, it actually automatically added a yes, no for me. Um, and then they also suggested that I add a maybe. Yes, no, and maybe. So those are my three options. Now, very important with this type of question is that you need to award a mark and you need to tell me, you need to tell the system what is the correct answer. So I'm going to go to my answer key and I say this, this question, this specific question is out of one mark. And then the correct answer is yes. So 
correct answer. I indicate which is the correct answer. I indicate the amount of walk and marks that is going to be awarded for a correct answer. And I click on done. Okay, so that's my first question now. Then I also want you to note that as I move around next to the question, there's actually a little icon where I can insert a picture. You can then browse or drag a file. So I can choose any picture here. You can actually insert that picture. Now it's uploading the picture. And you can insert that picture into your question. So your, your, your question can contain pictures. So can your answers. As you see there, I can actually add an image to each one of the answers. So you can actually insert pictures as well into your questions. Then. If you want to um, put in a picture that's going to be used in several questions, there is an icon, a picture icon on the side here as well. Below where you add questions, you can add text in between. Uh, you can add a file in between. Um, uh, you, and you can also add videos in between or you can add an image in between. So you, add, you can add an image with regards to if there's going to be a few questions on one image, then I'll add an image and all the questions after that can be on that image. Second type of question. So every time you want a new question, you just add the question over there. And the second type of question I use a lot is the short answer questions. So I can ask, let's say, what is the temperature today? And I can make it a short answer question. Then I can go to the answer key. Again, I add how many marks this is going to count. Now with a short answer question, we need to be very careful. You need to think of all the various options that people are going to put down here. So if I say 15, it says 15 degrees. Um, so some might say 15 degrees. Some might say 15 degrees like this or 15 degrees Celsius. So I have to go and I have to figure out what are the different, what are my different options that are going to be possible answers. I'm going to mark all other answers as incorrect for now. But please know that if you then go and somebody answered and they gave the right answer, but you didn't include that specific answer, you can always go back to the document afterwards and add that as a response, as a possible response. And what it's going to do is then it will re-evaluate all the previous answers and then add that as a correct answer as well, which is very helpful. Those are my basic two questions that I use. I don't want to go into too much detail. You can explore. There are some other options of different types of questions if you want to explore, but those are the basic two ones. Then I want to quickly just review with you how to get your, your answers or your responses for this, because that's also very useful. So the moment that I'm finished with this, I'm not going to send it. I'm simply going to close it in this case. I'm simply closing it. The moment I assign it, it's going to finalize everything for me. So if I go to my classroom, there's my example test now. And if I go in, you see now it, it gave the correct, it assigned it to all of the learners that's within my Google Classroom now. If I click there, now you can see that's the Google form that I created. So there's my example test with all the questions that I created. To get your answers, you're going to go to your drive. So I'm just going to go to Google. I'm going to click on these little app buttons. I'm going to choose drive. Under drive, I am looking for classroom. So Google Classroom automatically saves all of your, all of your things under uh, or classroom folder on Google Drive. So this is my classroom folder, as you can see uh, under Google Drive, my classroom folder. And the specific subject I was busy with right at the moment was Life Sciences Great 12 by Kilda. 
And now I'm going to take a look at where is that specific test that I have set. There it is, example test. So I look for the file, I look for the form that says example test because that's the one I was busy with, that's the one I sent out. But in this case, nobody has answered it yet. So I'm not going to go into that one. I'm just going to go into a different one right now, one that people have previously completed. And now I can make any changes that I want to make to it if I have to add alternative answers uh, to it. Or I can go to my responses. 45 people answered this question. So if I click on responses, I can see 45 people have answered this already. Um, if I go into the marks, it tells me that uh, 15 people or 14 people got 9 out of 14, 8 people got uh, 5 out of 14, 7 people got. So it tells you what the results are in the form of a graph. Then it gives me a list of email addresses together with the marks that each of them got. In this specific question, the question was, a short portion of DNA at a particular location in the chromosome is a gene, and 55.3% of people answered gene as the correct answer. And now I can see I had some alternatives because 15.8% answered gene, but with a small letter. So just when you have short questions, remember you need alternatives. And then this was a multiple choice question. So the external physical appearance of an organism, it's its phenotype. And 93.3% uh, people, of people answered phenotype. It's green because it's the correct answer. So 93% of my learners answered, uh, that answered this, answered it correctly. And 6.7% of them answered it incorrectly. I can also export this as a, as a spreadsheet. So if I go up top under the responses, there's a little sheets button. Uh, it's, it's got a green icon. If I click on that, it exports my results in, the term, in terms of a table. Thank you for watching. Hope it was helpful. Please subscribe and share to keep the channel going so we can make more helpful video clips.